Hello, in this video um, in, on SData, um, um, what I'm looking to do is to help you set up so you can play with SData yourself. So as we go through these videos, um, you can try the things that we're doing um, for yourself. So first off, um, what I'm giving you is a URL. So this one here at the top is a URL to a Sage server which has um, the latest version of Sage 300 installed on it. So this actually has uh, a current build of Sage um, ERP, or sorry, 300 ERP 6.1a, which we're now, you know, versioning as the 2012 release. So um, basically this is the latest version of Sage 300. Now as we go through these videos, um, some of the things that we're doing will um, work properly in, in this latest version, but may not work in the 6.0a release because a few things were improved in the SData support as we go to the next release. So um, since that's only a few months away, um, I'm going to concentrate on you know making sure that everything works on the next release, plus that's what I have installed. And, and then these videos won't immediately go out of date. And plus we can look at you know some of the newer features in SData that have been added as we go along. So if you are following along and you want to play with this yourself, you can of course use your own install and most of the stuff between the two versions is the same or you can have a beta version of the 2012 release or you'll be looking at listening to this video a bit later and you'll have the released version of, of Sage 300 ERP 2012. So if you have it installed yourself on your own computer, you'd probably access these things um, you know, using slash slash localhost. So this is how you typically access something on your own computer. And then the rest of the URL would be whatever. So we'll just go dot, dot, dot. Now the second, the second URL I have here is like a complete URL to actually get you some data out of SData. So we'll talk about that in a sec. But just along the same lines, if you're running locally, maybe you have a host name and you'll put in your own, um, you'll put in your own thing. So you might put in HTTP slash slash you know, whatever your your URL is for my host dot com. So maybe it starts like that. Or if you don't have a URL or anything else and you have it installed on another computer, you might go HTTP slash slash and then just use the um, IP address. So maybe something like 204, 21. 11, you know, 16, whatever your URL is. And I apologize to anyone who might actually own this URL because I just made it up. So, you know, and then you'd have the rest of the URL after that. So these are ways that you might be specifying the SData URL on your own local installation. But like I said, you don't need your local installation. Um, there is this um, publicly facing demo server that we have that you can do SData requests against. So feel free to do this and to experiment um, as you wish. Now here's a full URL for getting data out of this web server. So you know there's our URL. You know basically this first part is the host name that'll cause the request to go there. Now the URL is a bit longer than I had in the first video. We start with this SData servlet part. Now when we started doing SData support for both um, Sage 300 and Sage CRM, um, we were using older versions of IIS. And when we used older versions of IIS, we couldn't have SData as the start point and then route the messages to the right application using the application part of the URL. So, you know, for us, this is Sage ERP for Sage 300. For Sage CRM, this is Sage CRM. Um, but that routing didn't work because the older versions of, U of um, IIS, you could only route, you know, based on the first segment of the URL. So Sage CRM used SData first, and then when we went to install on the same computer, um, we ran into problems, so we added this SData servlet part, so this routes it to the Sage 300. Um, the Sage 300 S data processor. Now, in the new versions of IIS, this isn't a problem. So probably down the road for Sage 300, we'll look to optionally get rid of this segment to shorten it a little bit. So you won't need the S data servlet part anymore. But for now, you do need it to get things to go to, to the, the Sage 300 um, S data processor. So basically, this S data servlet just guarantees it goes to the right application. Then it's S data Sage ERP, which in a way isn't really being used too much. 
ACPAC is the contract, and we'll talk about contracts in a future video. SAM Inc. is the company name. If you use Stage 300 at all, you know that the sample data that comes with it is either SAM Limited or SAM Inc. So those are the two. AR Customer Finder then is an SData resource that we have to get the list of customers. So what's a way that we can actually play with um, this URL? And the way that we can play with it in, in these videos is I'm going to use the Chrome browser. So this is from Google. And the nice thing about the Chrome browser is that it's fairly simple and it displays um, the data that comes back without trying to mess with it or format it or anything. So you can enter these URLs into Firefox or IE, but they'll actually interpret the results because um, the results come back a, a, as a feed, which is an RSS standard, which means they actually know how to interpret it, which means that they'll display it nicely, but you lose some of the information. So we're not, we're not going to use that. We'll just use the Chrome browser. So what happens when we use the Chrome browser? So here we'll just put the Chrome browser over the window here. And what we'll do is we'll put in that URL that I've got on the screen. Now notice that the URL is probably a bit too long to fit here, so I apologize for that. But we'll hit Enter and let it go and get the data. Now if this was the first time I did this, it would have prompted me for a user ID and password. So we'll mention that in a sec. But basically then I get back a huge whack of data and you may not be able to see this too well, but here we'll see we've got ID cost 1100, which is our first customer in the database. The, name, the short name is BMTSD. Um, they're in the group WHL. Um, they're in national account Barmart. And we see various information, including the address they're on, the full name, Barmart San Diego. All that data is returned for us, and this is returned for every single customer. So basically, we've got a giant XML document returned to us, which has every single fee, every single field in, in Sage 300 for the customer, as well as every single customer. So we've, then we see the next one, we've got customer 1105, and so on. So we've got back quite a lot of data in the database um, for all the customers in Sage 300. Now, just to, to mention on the, the sign-in, there, there is um, something that might trip you up. So, oops, let's get the pen going here again. So the user ID, oops, let's just put this over here. So the user ID is admin. And you have to enter it in uppercase. And same way the password is also admin and it must be entered in uppercase. So normally when you work with Sage 300, um, you can enter upper or lower case into the sign on dialogues, but it's actually the UI that uppercases it. The actual back end is case sensitive on user IDs and passwords. So when you're entering them through a system that's not going to uppercase them like our UIs do, um, then you actually have to make sure that you enter them in uppercase. So when you enter these yourself, you'll have to enter these in uppercase. Now, um, for the purposes, since you don't really care about this data, it's just um, Sage 300 sample data, um, you know, feel free to make your browser remember that user ID and password. If you're doing this on your own real data, you may not want to do that because then someone else who comes along and uses the browser could access your data because it's remembered the credentials. So you may not want to do this on live data, but for our test purposes and playing around, it, it's just a convenience. So um, that's how that works. Now, out of this, we got, like I said, we got a whole lot of um, data back. And, you know, maybe, you know, we didn't want so much data. So just quickly, some things you can play with if you want to try getting individual um, customers. If you add on the end of this a bracket, and then a single quote 1200. This is a way that you can read a single customer record. So if we put that on the end of our URL, then we'll get back just the data for customer 1200. And we'll see it, it's in there. And again, we've gotten all the fields. So we see here it's 1200 and their name is in here um, somewhere that it's Mr. Ronald Black. 
so good old Ronald Black from Sage 300 sample data. Now, if we didn't want to quite get so much data, um, we still got every single field for Ronald Black. If we wanted to actually restrict the field, the way we start doing things with URLs to give more restrictive information is you start going question mark, which means we're going to enter um, more parameters. And the parameter we're going to enter this time is select, which is how we specify fields. And we're going to select equal ID, oops, ID cast. And then inside URLs, I can't enter commas, so I have to enter the hex equivalent of a comma, which happens to be percent to C. Now, if you're using software to actually generate these URLs, this is called URL encoding, and this will be done automatically for you by your client software if you're writing programs to do this. But for the first few videos, we're going to do all the URLs by hand, so we're going to um, just be typing these to learn them. And then later we'll start using client software to create the URLs, and then it'll make our lives a little bit easier, or at least it'll make it different. And say we want name cast as the other field. Now if we enter that, um, what we'll get back is we'll get back only those two fields. So now we've got only 1200 and Ronald Black, those two fields. So this is just sort of a way that we, we manage to actually simplify what we're trying to get. So here we see, you know, air customers finder, so that's all the customers, but we say just read record 1200 and then select just the fields ID cast and name cast. So that's a way that we can limit, you know, the sort of data that we're getting back. And this demonstrates how we can actually um, play with um, the URLs a little bit in the browser to see what happens. So one thing you might ask is, I've got AR Customer Finder. How did I know what that was? Well, generally in SData, if you want a list of things, if I shorten the URL, so if I get rid of this so I don't specify a resource, and I hit Enter, what I'll actually get back is a list of all the resources. So in here is all the resources like AP Vendor Finder. So the AP Vendors Finders is not another resource that you can play with and feel free to do that. The same way if I want the list of companies, because I don't know what, that it's Sam Inc, I just shorten the URL again. And if I do that, then what I get back is a list of companies. So I see Sam Inc and Sam Limited, the two sample databases are in the URL. So basically it's a way that I can just play with the URLs and I can learn things about the system. And don't worry about it. If you type an error and enter it in, you'll just get back a message telling you what's wrong. So the whole intent of this is, is to just learn by doing and to be able to practice. So I hope that you do um, play with this a little bit. And as future videos go, um, you can follow along and try doing these things yourselves. Um, because after all, the best way to learn something is to learn by doing. So thank you.